if we have an electron and we put it near to another electron, what these two things are going to do is they're going to repel. However, how do they know that the other particle is there? Well, this is where we can think about exchange particles or bosons. Now, basically, if we have this electrostatic repulsion, what we need is the photon. Now, the photon is what carries this electromagnetic force. And basically, as these two particles come together, there's an exchange of um, a photon between them that lets the other one know it's there, and then the two things repel. Now, does that kind of make sense? It's kind of a bit of a leap, but basically what we can do is we can show this with a diagram. And basically on this diagram, what we can have up this axis here, so as we go up the page, we can look at how time increases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw effectively these two particles coming together, an exchange of a particle, in which case this is a, a photon, and then what happens after the event. And this is called a Feynman diagram. So first of all, here we have the two particles moving towards each other. And what they do is there must be an exchange of this particle so that, that they know the other thing is there and therefore they know they need to repel. And what I'm going to do is, because effectively I'm representing the particles that come in as a straight line, because this is a boson, I'm going to put that as a wiggly line a bit like this, okay? And uh, in this case, this one is a gamma photon, okay? What happens next is that um, they repel and therefore the particles move off kind of back towards their original position or they, they experience that force. And what we have now is a diagram to actually show this interaction of uh, a couple of electrons. And this diagram here, you know, it should be familiar, it's probably in this corner of the video here as well as like the logo for my channel. But basically this is what we call a Feynman diagram and it's a nice, really straightforward, simple way to actually look at particle interactions. Now a particle interaction that you need to know about is perhaps beta minus emission. Okay, and what you might remember, or what you should know actually, is that if you have a neutron, that can decay to make a proton, an electron, and also an anti-electron neutrino. Okay, so what we're doing is making a number of particles, okay? Now we can think about that, again, using a Feynman diagram. So first of all, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the neutron down here. Okay, so maybe uh, this neutron, and we're going to think about what happens as time progresses. Okay, this neutron here, what it's going to do is it's going to decay by the weak force. And basically, I'm going to show this weak force here, again, with this kind of squiggly line. And I'm just going to have this bit of Lego here to be my kind of W boson. Okay, what do we produce in this? Well, we produce this thing here. Now, this thing here is a proton, which I'm going to put as coming out in this direction. Okay, we also get given out an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. So if I draw my electron, I'm going to draw it a bit like this. Okay, so, that, so this is my uh, neutron, that's my proton, and this is my electron. Now we also get given out an antimatter particle. Now when we draw antimatter, uh, what we do is rather than have the arrows going away, we have the arrow coming towards it. So this thing here represents my anti-electron neutrino. And again, this thing here just shows very clearly that we have a neutron that turns into a proton and it gives out by, because we have a weak interaction, you know, with the quarks inside, we get given out the electron and also the anti-electron neutrino. And remember, when we have this um, kind of neutron turning into a proton, two of the quarks inside don't actually change. The up and the down uh, stay the same and it's only really a down quark changing to an up quark. So we can also think about this, maybe rather than just the protons and neutrons, we can draw a couple more lines in a bit like this. Okay, now basically um, at the bottom, uh, this one here could represent maybe an up quark, and then it comes out as an up quark after the reaction. A down quark goes in and it comes out as a down quark. So these two things don't actually take part in the reaction. What we do have though is a down quark at the bottom that turns into an up quark. And so again, I can use this Feynman diagram here to show maybe how it's only really the down quark decaying to an up quark via the weak interaction and this kind of W boson that then gives out the electron and the anti-electron neutrino. Does it make sense? Uh, I hope so. Um, I think it does, you know, in many ways, uh, you know, because that thing there, it looks a bit like a sort of chemistry reaction. This one here is actually showing the exchange forces involved. And these Feynman diagrams do get really complicated. So, you know, have a look on Wikipedia, have a look on, look on the internet. And, you know, at university level, this goes crazy. But I do think in many ways it does kind of show you quite nicely what's happening with these particle interactions. Thank you.